Okay, so we've looked at resolutions, which is the A records, uh, and now what we want to do is actually explore the DNS tab, which is every other DNS type record that I uh, that I mentioned before that's collected off of our sensors, either through the passive side of it, having a sensor on the network, uh, or through active resolution by actually going out and manually going and getting this information. So it would be scale. like the name servers, the, the mail exchange records, yep. things like that. Yeah, so it would be name servers, mail exchange, start of authority, text records, and C names or canonical names. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those records will end up in this DNS tab. Um, and what's incredibly valuable here is that much like the history that we have for the A records, we can see the IP addresses over time. With the DN, uh, we have all the history for all of the different DNS records as well. And from an analyst perspective, what I particularly find interesting uh, and what I look for when viewing this tab is the length of history for one, how long has the infrastructure been around. And then with some of these record types, we can begin to infer the technologies that may be running uh, parts of PassiveTotal.org. So for instance, we have a number of MX records that are showing references to Google.com. Now, if you've ever set up uh, Google for Business, you'll recognize these MX records because essentially what we're telling um, the systems through DNS is that all of our mail, uh, like the mail exchange, so sh should be routing through google.com. Right. And so now, if I'm thinking about this from an analyst perspective, I can then say, well, maybe passivetotal.org is actually the domain that's being used for email uh, for maybe the company or the individuals associated with that. Um, and in this particular case, that, that would be correct. We used Google Apps for business. Now, now sometimes uh, threat actors might have specific IP ranges associated with infrastructure or name servers. So they might have that available. So by looking at this information, you might see um, overlap or you might not see overlap in, in different infrastructure. Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. You mentioned name servers. So in some cases, attackers will actually stand up their own name server, maybe even on the domain uh, or one of their malicious domains. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to look for when looking at something like the name server records is the uniqueness that's associated with them. Because these become another pivot point as well. We could say, show me any records that uh, also share the same name server. If it's a highly unique name server, then we potentially have all of the attacker's infrastructure. Now in the case of passivetotal.org, we're actually using AWS DNS and specifically Route 53, which is an Amazon service. Mm -hmm. So again, like thinking about, you know, if I'm, I'm looking at PassiveTool.org and I'm not necessarily certain if it's good or bad, one of the indicators as an analyst that, that some of the services are telling me is that PassiveTool.org appears to be using Amazon for their name servers, okay, uh, that it seems like they might have Google Mail set up mm -hmm. um, and looking at let's say these text records here, that we've gone through and configured SPF uh, on, on our, uh, our setup as well. So we went and validated um, who can send mail from our particular servers or where, how we're gonna accept that. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm thinking from an analyst perspective, it seems like there's a lot of work that's been put into this infrastructure. It's been around a while, it's got mail configured, it's got a third party you know, cloud provider for its uh, services that match the current hosting provider, mm -hmm. and they've went through and actually set up some manual text records that help validate the authenticity of the domain. So something to keep in mind here is that with these DNS records, that helps us figure out how legitimate the domain might be. Having that extended history, having those services configured is probably not something that an attacker is going to do. And the first and last scene to see if the infrastructure is it brand new or is it something that's been around for a while? Yeah, that's exactly correct as well. So looking at just the history overall, many of these records have been around for at least a year or more. Um, and that's important to note here. And again, uh, going back to our example for the resolutions tab, how we mm -hmm. started with DigitalOcean and then transitioned to Amazon, you can actually see here individual points in time where DigitalOcean Digital yeah. was used as our name server, and then we went up and then eventually swapped over to those uh, Amazon uh, accounts as well. And so again, you know, much like passive DNS, one of the big primary factors here, you want to look at time. How long has the infrastructure been around? You want to look at, see if you can derive any services that are running, any technologies and really identify how much work's been put in the infrastructure and setting it up. Mm -hmm. uh, that might help you figure out with what you're looking at is either malicious or non-malicious.